Hey y'all, I'm here to do a review on the Floral and Fauna of Africa Oracle deck by Jesse Jamunji. This deck includes a flower, animal, and keyword or key phrase as well as a summary of the meaning of the card on each card. Um, so there is no guidebook because the cards are pretty much self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and do the walkthrough and I'm going to show you the cards, read the name of the botanical and the animal, um, and um, I might read some of the summaries on the cards after I do the walkthrough. So I'm going to do the walkthrough first for people who just want to see the cards and then I'll do a review of the cards or the deck afterwards. So if you want to hear my thoughts on the deck or more information about the deck, stick around um, after the walkthrough. Also, I am in Texas. It's over 100 degrees, so I do have the air on. Hopefully y'all can't hear it, but it's too hot to turn it off. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get into the walkthrough. As you can see, this is the back of the cards. So first we have Egyptian Cobra. The key word is wisdom. And the plant is Solomon's seal. And just to let y'all know, I might mispronounce some of this stuff, so just Give me a break and cut me some slack. <laughs> okay, next we have water buffalo. The keyword is gratitude. And the flower is water lily. Next we have octopus. The keyword is flexibility. And um, the flower or botanical is Feverview. Never heard of that. I might have to see what that is. Okay, next we have cassowary, and the key word is overcoming. The botanical is mistletoe. Next we have butterfly. The keyword is transformation and the name of the botanical is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's an interesting <laughs> name for a flower. So there's a lot of things that I haven't heard of in this deck so I want to look them up to see what they mean or what they stand for or what they're good for. Next we have lobster. The key word is release and the flower is trumpet creeper. Sorry, it's hard to read the little words through the viewfinder of the camera. Okay, so next we have the emperor scorpion. The flower is the banana flower and the phrase is expansive thought. Next we have the chameleon and the phrase is adaptation, the flower is passion flower. I have some passion flowers. Next we have hippopotamus, the key word is creativity and graviaea. Revelia. I don't know how to say this flower. This is what it is, though. Okay, that's the flower. I don't know how to say it. Some of these I might just skip and not even try to pronounce. Okay, next we have Black Rhinoceros. The key phrase is clear perspective, and the flower is eye bright. I'm just going to zoom in. Next we have the scarab beetle. 
the key phrase is new possibilities and the botanical is scabiosa next we have the fire salamander and the key phrase is clear blockages the star of Bethlehem is the flower next we have the knobbed hornbill the key word is overcoming and the flower is glory pea next we have the tooth rock crab the keyword is reflection and the botanical is heath bell next we have the leaf cutter ant the keyword is confidence and the flower is the pink knotweed we have the arabian camel the key phrase is persistence and the plant is burdock. I like to use burdock. Next we have the flamingo. The key phrase is balance emotions and the flower is lemon balm. Um, I think lemon balm is also known as Melissa. And we have tarantula. The key phrase is cosmic connection and the flower is the sago lily. Next we have the bush elephant. The key phrase is sweet memories and the flower is evening primrose. Evening primrose oil is good for the skin I believe. Then we have the Nile Crocodile. The key phrase is self-awareness and the flower is the butterfly orchid. Okay, this one I'm probably pronouncing wrong. Um, Okapi is the animal. The key phrase is spiritual growth and the flower is the sacred lotus. Next we have the brown fish owl. The key phrase is courage to change and the botanical is thorn apple. Next we have the golden crowned bat. The key word is rebirth and the flower is dogwood. Next we have shark. The key word is preparation and the botanical is the Venus flytrap. Next we have the red-headed vulture. The key phrase is self-respect and the flower is scotch thistle. Next we have the serrated tortoise. The key word is longevity and the flower is U Y E W. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not sure. Next we have the jaguar and the key word is spirituality. The name of the botanical is Jack in the Pulpit. That is interesting, Jack in the Pulpit. Next we have the Cape Honeybee. The key phrase is sweetness and the flower is honeysuckle. We have the red jungle fowl. The key word is faith and the flower is gentiana. Next we have the golden wolf. The key word is intuition and the flower is native wood violet. We have the quagga zebra, <laughs> probably said that wrong too. Um, the key word is harmony and the flower is tiger lily. We have the caracal and the key word is opportunity and the flower is rosella. We have the golden backed frog with the keyword of ambition and the flower is hollyhock. We have the chimpanzee with the keyword of expression and chickweed as the botanical. 
we have this cicada and the key phrase is inner voice the flower is wake robin we have the nubian giraffe the key word is foresight and the flower is coreopsis <laughs> The key word on this one is self-awareness. The animal is mosquito and the botanical is the Jamia lily or Gimia lily, not quite sure. Next we have the praying mantis with the key word of tranquility and the flower is the stone crop. Next we have the Komodo dragon with the key word of steadfastness and oak is the botanical. Next we have the savanna hair with a key word of thoroughness and the flower is verbena or verbena. Not sure how you say it. Next we have the springbok. The key words are devotion and duty. So this one has two and the flower is oak. I thought we just saw one with oak. This is the card. Um, but yeah, I thought we had one that said oak already. Next we have the donkey. The key word is service and the botanical is lady slipper. Next we have the lemur and the key word is friendship and the botanical is acacia, or don't get me the lion, acacia, acacia, something like that. Okay, next we have the lion, and the key word is favor, and the flower is geranium. Next we have the crested porcupine, the key word is fearlessness, and the flower is monkshood, or monkshood, I'm not sure which one it is. Next we have the giant snail. The key word is momentum and the flower is chicory. Next we have the spotted hyena. The key word is protection and the flower is delphinium. Delphinium. <laughs> delphinium. Next we have the ostrich and the key word is grounding. The flower is hawkweed. We have the secretary bird and the key word is confidence and decision. I guess that's a key phrase. Um, and the flower is the Mayflower. Next we have the magpie shrike and the key word is priorities. The flower is the petunia. Next we have the angelfish and the key word is courage. The flower is copahue. Next we have the Atlas Bear. The key word is appreciation and the flower is Forsythia. And lastly we have the Pangolin. The key word is boundaries and the flower is the Chrysanthemum. Alright, so you've seen all the cards. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about what I think of the cards and just some information about the deck. This is the box. It does not come with the little half circle cutout. So it is very hard to open. I'm not even gonna try um, to open. It's very hard to open. The good thing is it does come with this drawstring bag and it is a nice quality bag. So you can just store your cards in the bag. That's what I do. I don't even try to put them back in the box because I don't want to have to deal with trying to open in the box. Um, so the card stock is very nice. It's like a linen type of feel. It's soft a little bit. I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of soft. It shuffles well. I have very small hands. Um, so it's very hard for me to shuffle cards, but it shuffles really nicely. If you have the five cent tarot, 
Um, those cards are also made with this linen cardstock, so it's similar to those. This is the five cent tarot. This is also an animal deck and a botanical deck. So I was kind of excited to get the flora and fauna oracle deck because I already have the five cent tarot. So now I have a tarot deck and an oracle deck that I can use together because they have a similar theme and you know similar card stock. Um, so as far as what I would use this deck for or the types of readings I would use the deck for, I think this would be a good deck to use for self-reflection, um, shadow work, just to see what you need to focus on, um, what needs to be brought to your attention, that sort of thing. The messages are inspirational but also kind of tell you what you may need to stop doing or start doing. So I, I like the deck overall. Um, it's beautiful. The cards are beautiful. I think I paid around $57 for the deck and about $5 for shipping. Um, and that was straight from her website. So I'm going to go ahead and read a few of the cards for you just so you can have a feel for the types of messages that are on the cards. So we have the Egyptian Cobra. You have power and grace. Know when to use your voice and when to use your venom. The key word is wisdom on this one. And um, I'm not going to say the name of the flower. So this is basically just letting you know um, you might want to pick your battles. There are times where you may want to just play things cool, um, but also don't let people take advantage of you either. So um, I kind of like that card. Know when to use your voice and your venom. That's interesting. Next, we have the water buffalo. You are part of a greater whole. With determination and gratitude, prosperity and abundance will manifest. I really like this card because I feel like one of the keys to manifesting is using gratitude. Um, I'm going to be doing a video pretty soon to explain how I manifest and that's one of the things that I make sure I always incorporate just being grateful and expressing gratitude for everything that I have, um, will have, even the things that I don't have because they may not serve me. So I think that's a very good card. Then we have Octopus. Make progress, not announcements. Your next win requires some privacy. You can multitask and be more efficient without the distractions. So that's another thing with manifestation. You don't want to just go around telling everybody what you're manifesting or what you're working on. Sometimes you have to move in silence um, and then let your work and your actions and your blessings speak for themselves. You don't have to go broadcasting everything you plan on doing. So I like that card. I think it's important. Then we have the cassowary. Use your power wisely. You are strong enough to be vulnerable. Confront obstacles head on and retreat to your sacred space. I love this card because a lot of the times people think being vulnerable is being weak when it actually takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable and show people who you really are deep down inside when you go home and there's no one else there. So I think that's a really good card. Um, also when it comes to shadow work a lot of the times people will tell you if you think of a negative thought or some negative thought keeps coming up in your head just stop thinking about it. Push it out of your mind. Replace it with something positive. And sometimes that is what you need to do, especially if you have something to do. You need to work for that day. Um, you have things that you need to get done. We do have to have the ability to kind of put things on the back burner so we can actually be productive and live our lives. But also, sometimes you need to address things head on. So if you're having a negative emotion pop up over and over again in your head there's a reason why it's coming up and we need to get to the bottom of those reasons um, suppressing something is not releasing it in order to release sometimes you do need to address the problem 
see why that thought keeps occurring over and over again and get to the root of it so that way you can release it so i like that card um and i really like this deck so i do plan on using it for myself for a while i may start incorporating them into readings um for other people um, so that's my review of the Flora and Fauna deck by Jesse Jamunji. I hope you liked it. Um, the next deck I'm going to do a review on, I think it's called Guardians of Wisdom. It's not a new deck, but it's out of print. And I asked the um, creator of the deck to send me a copy and he sent it to me. So I'm just waiting on it to come in the mail. I will be doing that next. Again, thank you for watching. Y'all have a good day. Bye.